Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to my very unofficial and not at all comprehensive guide to Paris. Do I feel at all qualified to be doing this having only lived here for the past month and a half? Not at all, but a lot of you guys have been asking me for some of my favorite spots or things to do when you come visit, so I thought it'd be sweet to share where I've been hanging out and things I've been doing. Most of these recommendations are based off the areas I lived in, so just an obvious disclaimer there is so much of Paris I haven't explored or experienced. If any of you guys live here or if you've got any locals watching, please comment down below some of your recommendations too so we can, you know, all help each other out. So I stayed in two different R&D months whilst I was here. I was in the 6th right next to Jardin de Luxembourg for one month and now I am in the 11th in Bastille. I've been here for the past two-ish weeks. They are both two great areas, but also very, very different. I feel like the 11th is definitely more the younger, trendier side of Paris. You'll have no issue finding vegan food, cool bars to go to. Whilst the 6th is like the epitome of the old romanticized Paris. The buildings are beautiful. You have long established brasseries and cafes where artists and writers used to hang out. And you're also in walking distance of a lot of great music museums and gardens. I love being a Reeve Gauche bitch for that month. That area of Paris truly just feels like you're walking on a movie set every day but I can definitely see the perks of living on this side of the river. Especially where I am, I'm like walking distance to Hot Marais, High Marais, where there's a lot of really cool bars and restaurants that I like to go to and just like the vibes here are a lot more chill and not so like old and traditional like it is over there. I will also be writing all my recommendations in a blog post on my Squarespace site which I'll have linked down below. If you don't know what Squarespace is, they are an amazing online platform where you can create your own website and host your online presence whether it is for showcasing your portfolio, having an online store or blogging and building a community. I really wanted to create a website for myself where I could connect all my social medias and have a place to share my thoughts and writings and art kind of like an online portfolio just showcasing who I am. Squarespace has thousands of beautiful and customizable templates that make it so easy to start and maintain. It means that you can just focus on the content that you're creating or your business. If you're looking to start selling your work or products online, Squarespace have all the tools to facilitate that and also just help in building your brand. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial and you can start playing around with your site and when you feel ready to launch you can go to squarespace.com Moya to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. So thank you to them once again for sponsoring and let's get into the rest of the guide. Okay so as YouTube's resident art historian I have to talk about the museums and galleries because you know art and Paris are just synonymous you can't have one without the other. One thing to remember if you are an EU citizen or under 26 you can just show your ID or passport at the entrance for most museums and galleries to get free entry which is so great and I hit to flex but if not a lot of galleries also do free entry on the first Sunday of every month um, so you can check out which ones do that. If you only go to one museum in Paris please please go to the Musée de l'Oranger. It's in the Tuileries, the gardens next to the Louvre and home to Monet's great work Les Nonfeas. Again, may have butchered that. It is just so ridiculously beautiful. I have been so many times and each time I go in, I feel like I'm gonna cry. I have cried a few times. It's just beyond incredible to experience Monet's work and his brush strokes and his technique in such close proximity. You really feel like you're both within the ponds and like looking from above. I would definitely suggest going to the water lilies last and doing the permanent collection down below first because I mean the water lilies is like the crown jewel of the museum, you don't want to peek too early. What I love is that the museum is like the perfect size to visit and see everything and leave feeling satisfied. I of course love the Louvre and the Musée d'Orsay but they can be so overwhelming and you almost need a few days to be able to go around to see everything. So that's why I say if you're going to do one, do the Musée de l'Orangerie. My close second, which you've also seen in my vlogs, is the Musée Rodin. It is also quite small and super digestible and the actual buildings and gardens 
are so beautiful and such a nice respite from the more touristy sides of Paris. It houses Rodin's work and collection who was one of the greatest modern sculptors. He was a naturalist and his work was originally met with a lot of controversy for their lack of idealism and break from academic tradition. But when he experienced his works in person you can see why he became so successful later on. The motion and soul he is able to capture within a permanent medium is just so stunning. If you're traveling with someone who doesn't necessarily like looking at paintings, I feel like this would be a good museum for you because it's obviously made up of a lot of sculptures. Okay, little coffee break. My favorite coffee shop in Saint-Germain actually opened, I think, within the past month or so. It doesn't even have like a Google Maps location, but it's called Maison Florette and it's down the road from saint Pearl, which is also another great spot, but it can get super busy. So definitely head down the street to this one. It does really good coffee, really good matcha, oat milk options. I haven't tried the food, but it did look really good. And the interior is chef's kiss. It is like a light academic dream. You're just like sitting in a library of books. It's so beautiful. And for this side of the river, my favorite coffee shop that I've been to is Dreaming Man. I think it's in the 10th, aren't you small? Or just past the 11th. Coffee is so good there. Really cute vibes. It's only got like a few tables to sit at outside, but I would definitely check it out. So for food, we have cheap eats, slightly more spenny places, and then vegan options as well. I decided once I got to Paris to not be so strictly plant-based. Um, I've still been cooking vegan at home but there have been a lot of things that I want to try and also I would rather take like the fish option over a more dairy heavy veggie option. For cheap eats, Au Petit Grec in the 5th R&D Smont, this is a super studenty area where a lot of the universities are so you're definitely going to find a lot more value for money there but they do the best crepes, huge portions, such good value for money. Not really good for vegans but I would definitely recommend the like feta and aubergine one, it is so so good. One of my favorite cheap eat spots in Paris is Fresh Noodles in the Marais. Me and Lisa stumbled across it back in November when we went to some Asian food and I have eaten there and eaten the same thing about seven or eight times since. I always get the tofu homemade noodle soup and it is just so comforting. It's really good value. I think it's like eight euros for this huge portion and of course I don't know if this belongs in cheap eats but going to boulangerie and getting un baguette tradition or croissant you have to do. If you go to Maison d'Isabelle, I think it's in the 6th arrondissement, they do one euro croissants and they're meant to be some of the best in Paris. Honestly, I can't really tell the difference between a lot of them, um, but I feel like that's going to cause some debate down below. So if you have your croissant spot, leave it down and um, we can all check them out. Frenchie is one of my favorite wine bars that I've been to. I went a few years back and then came back again this time around with a friend. Just the ambiance and the wine and the small plates are all so good. They actually have a Michelin star sister restaurant across the road, which you have to reserve for, but the wine bar is walk-ins only and I mean, I feel like the food comes from the same kitchen and the wine is so good. Another really cute and vibey wine bar is Early June, which is up in the 10th R&D Small near the canals. Really beautiful, small plates and tapas, just great for sharing. It'd be such a cute date spot or somewhere to go with your friends. Also, when I was staying in the 6th, I went to La Palette a few times, which is more of like an old school traditional brasserie. I think it's actually where Cezanne and Picasso and a few of the artists used to like meet and there's like a crowd of men who'll just like smoke cigars and play cards. They have just like your typical kind of French food. It's a little bit more expensive and you know, it's like good. I feel like the vibe is definitely better than like the food, but it's a really sweet spot. If you're looking for a more Italian food, that's not the big mama group restaurant. I went to Carboni's twice, both times I had the pesto pasta. It was super yummy. And there's also Racine's in the second arrondissement, which is meant to be a really good Italian place. I haven't gotten to go yet, maybe. I will by the end of this video, I don't know. I thought I'd have a difficult time being vegan when I came to Paris, which was kind of true at the start when I was living more in the 6th R&D small and yeah, I obviously decided that I wasn't gonna eat fully plant-based anymore. But now that I'm over here and around the 11th and the 10th, there have been so many great options that Honestly, I feel like you can definitely make it work. There are two amazing boulangeries which I want to mention. The first one, my absolute favorite, Land and Monkeys. Everything there is vegan, I'm pretty sure, and they have some gluten-free options. They have a three euro breakfast where you can get espresso and a vegan croissant, and they also have a 10 euro like lunch deal where you can get a dessert, 
one of their sandwiches or quiches their quiches are so good don't miss out on their quiches just everything that they have has been so tasty and i'm really gonna miss it the other boulangerie is called boulangerie chambola chambaland i'm not sure if everything's vegan i think it mostly focuses on gluten-free options because i went with kit who is gluten-free there was also a gluten-free cafe beside me in the sixth called le pont traverse which did really good gluten-free cakes and also patisseries. Aujourd'hui Demain is a great all-day vegan restaurant and concept store. I first went there back in November in my solo date video and I've been a few more times since. Their food is really good and they have like amazing cakes and it's actually quite decently priced. However, every single time I go there, their service is so slow. They're not like rude about it. In fact, they're like usually quite nice staff but they just don't seem to have any system to whatever's happening. And the final spot I'll mention is Tian Yan. I'm definitely gonna kill that, but it's up in the 10th and it is a fully vegan Asian restaurant. I had the fake beef bo bun, um, which I think is a Vietnamese dish, and oh my god, it was so good. The like the beef was so yummy, and then there was tofu and rice noodles and veggies the staff were really really sweet and friendly it also came out within like 10 seconds it was ridiculous so for bars and going out saint germain had a lot of like bougier wine bars i went to this one called la grand cremerie which had such a lovely ambiance the staff were really sweet the wine was really delicious really nice little small plates i had a pasta dish which was and down the street there is Bar de Marche which is definitely a livelier kind of younger terrace but it was always really hard to get a table outside there. For other kind of bar terraces that I've been to in Hold Marais, I think that's how it's pronounced, Cafe La Pearl and La Progrès are two that I've been back to a few times and really really like. They are great for people watching, definitely seem a little sceney but if you can get a table with your friends super fun if you're on a more cocktail buzz there are two speakeasies that my friends show me and um, the first one candelaria it's behind a mexican restaurant and really cozy kind of like dark ambiance the cocktails all the ones that i've tried were super yummy and i think the staff do speak english if you need and the other one mezcalita is behind the lobby of the hotel and you have to like go through the kitchen but it's like mexican themed so a lot of their drinks are like mezcal, agave, tequila based, kind of strong but definitely more lively and younger crowd and just like a cool experience. Also in that area there's like Bisu, Lil Red Door, Labotronic or Labomatric. In terms of clubbing I feel like it kind of depends on the night and the people that you go with but I went to Pachamama, Sacre, Boom Boom and they were all super fun from what I remember. The inside Pachamama was like really cool. It was like four levels and you can like look down on the dance floor but also at every single level I guess you people dancing if you love like electronic and techno music definitely download the ra guide and see what events are happening when you're there last time i was in paris with elena and her friends and this time around i went to a rave called le possession which was super fun it's more like trans techno music but really like nice open vibe and everyone's just kind of like doing their own thing so there's a suggestion. And lastly, for things to do in Paris, first up, we of course have thrifting. Paris has so many amazing uh, vintage stores and free breweries. If you're down to pick through a bunch and find some cheap gems, the Freep Stars are really good. They have so many locations over Paris and everything is mostly under 20 euros. They also have a one euro bin. But for more curated vintage, you have a few spots around Chateau d'Eau, like Super Vintage was really good, or Sheen Machine. There's also, thanks God, I'm a VIP, which is more designed pieces and in Bastille there is a shop called Common Eileen which is a lot more high-end kind of cool designer pieces but not as expensive as thanks god i'm a vip luxembourg gardens is one of my favorite places to just sit and read and people watch just be prepared to fight for those like loungy back chairs on a sunny day but it's one of my favorite parks in central paris if you're looking for a more greener space you go to 16th to the bois de boulogne or the park de but charmant <laughs> i should have like 
practice these words before I start recording this but they are also lovely and beautiful parks and if you're gonna do one super touristy thing you have to do an Eiffel Tower picnic when it's sparkling it's just a rite of passage you need to get a takeaway bowl of wine a baguette some cheese some crisps for extra main character energy rent a line bike or scooter and you can like scoot up whilst it's like sparkling and it's so cute and romantic and lastly the food market in Marais, Marche des Enfants Rouges it's a covered food market with a bunch of small restaurants and wine bars and also places where you can buy your groceries there are just so many food options that you can pick from all the produce looks so beautiful and it's also a great spot to grab a drink and people watch if you want but that is all the recommendations which I have for you guys I hope you enjoyed it my voice is getting kind of sore I know I I'm not a qualified expert on Paris at all and there's so many areas like I didn't even touch on like Montmartre or like that side of Paris. I hope you enjoyed and thank you so much for all the love and support on the Paris vlogs. It actually means the world and I am so sad that I'm leaving. I feel like I'll be back though. I don't know. I've been very very happy here and I also really want to you know become fluent in French and I guess the only way you're going to do that is if you live in the country so I love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'll talk to you soon. Bye!